Once we've calculated the number of postcards or items that will fit on each press sheet, we can use that to calculate the total number of sheets that we need to purchase for our job. That's where our number of sheets needed formula comes into play. So now that we know the number out, we will take the quantity of the item that we are producing and divide it by how many of that item we can fit on every one sheet of paper. And again, it's important that no matter what the total or the, the value is that we get from this formula, we take it and we round it up to the next whole number. If we do not round it up, let's say that it comes out to 1,000.1, that can cause us not to meet our quantity that our client has asked for. So let's take this example. We have our 23 by 35 inch press sheets and we're printing those 5 by 7 inch postcards. We want to print 1.5 million of them. So our quantity of postcards is 1.5 million. We'll divide that by 21 out because we calculated the value of the number out in the last video. And it comes out to 71,428.5714 sheets needed. Now I can't print 0.5714 sheets. So I'm going to round that up and say that I would like to purchase 71,429 sheets. We can make this even more complicated by calculating how many sheets that we're going to waste while we're on press or how many sheets might be wasted um, when we're binding or finishing a book. But for the purpose of our introductory course, we're simply going to answer the question, what is the exact number we need to meet our quantity and not worry about any of those peripherals. The second step in calculating the price of paper is to calculate the paper weight. And this is a direct reference to our previous lecture on paper weights. So if you haven't already done the paper weights lecture, you should stop this lecture and go back to that one to review the process. I'm going to go through it in this lecture very quickly. If you're looking to go back and have a thorough review, you'll reference slides 22 to 25 in the paper weights lecture. The steps that we use to calculate the weight of paper are First, we need to answer how many sheets of paper do we need, and we've just calculated that in the previous video. Oh, actually, we just did it in this video. My bad. Uh, what size of paper are we purchasing? And again, for our class, we will always purchase and use the same size, but in the real world, you don't have to. Maybe I purchase 25 by 38 sheets of paper, and I cut it in half and run 19 by 25. That would be perfectly acceptable. But to keep things simple in our class, if we are running 19 by 25 inch sheets of paper, we will purchase 19 by 25 inch sheets of paper. We then need to identify the basic size of the paper that we're purchasing because it affects the calculation of the weight of paper. And then we need to identify what the basis weight of the paper is. Is it 80 pound? Is it 100 pound, 120 pound, etc. If you do not have all of the answers to these four questions, you will not be able to calculate the weight of the paper.